Czechoslovakia by the armed forces of Russia, and most of our Warsaw Pact allies has greatly shocked the free world. We as Canadians of Slovak and Czech descent are grateful for the unequivocal stand taken by the Canadian government in support of the resolution of the United Nations Security Council and trust that Canada will remain firm in this position. In Montreal today, the sit-in began outside the administration building at noon. Placards and orators demanded the replacement of the Board of Governors by a Council of Student and Faculty and cessation of all military and paramilitary research contracts. A large number of students surged into the building and a small group occupied the boardroom. They have nothing to do with the Board of Governors. They, they didn't hire the Board of Governors. They, they don't even know the Board of Governors. They what are you talking about? They can't file any resolution. You're not in a university yourself. Is it because you don't have the money to attend? I don't have the money to buy the land to start my own. Well, all and right. I don't and, like the way uh, this many of them. Run. How much money do you think it takes to run a university in a year? What percentage of this money comes from corporation? What percentage comes from taxes? What well, percentage so comes from university? I think the money in the Northwestern Hemisphere is corrupt. Corrupt with murder. You don't like it. You don't like the capitalist system. I don't like murder and genocide. No. And you, no you, you feel? Do you feel that? You no, like certainly that? not. Certainly uh -huh. not. Okay. I don't think anyone would. No. But nobody just the would. thing. Nobody the thing, would. The thing. Well, nobody would why, like. Why that. do you feel there's a link between the role of a governor but a university with genocide? I think the money. What do, what do you feel? Paid like with genocide money. money. After repeated warnings, the principal called the police. Subsequent investigation revealed only a minority of the demonstrators who broke into the boardroom were in fact students. The majority were members of a group of professional agitators. The university, however, pressed no charges against the latter. Professional. It's a compliment. <laughs> in the world of sports, the Alouettes downed the Tiger Cats in a grueling battle. Paper, 25 cents? No. Give me 25 cents. I'll give you 25 cents if you take one. Oh, yeah? Sure. <laughs> or you take one now, huh? Yeah, it's it. not the newspaper, huh? huh? You want one? What is my I'll read it. Huh? Wait, is it English? English and French. Oh, yeah, There's a few articles yeah, in French. It. Yeah. And it has various articles give it to in it. Huh? Yeah, give it to you free? Yeah. Why wouldn't you pay 25 cents? Yeah, you really don't have 25 cents with you? Are you sincere in that? No, can't I'm afford not. it? No, I can't afford it. I'm you can't afford it. Okay. I... Pass it on to somebody else when you finish with it. Newspaper? 25 cents. Rap court. All good news. Cheap good news. Like a newspaper? Okay. Newspaper? 25 cents. Newspaper? 25 cents. All good news. Newspaper? 25 cents. Is that a newspaper, sir? 25 cents. Rap cord. Local newspaper. Articles on films and uh, politics. What's it on? It's printed independently. I publish it. I'm the editor. Printed private. Yes. Where do you get? It must cost quite a bit to put this on. The funds? We all have, uh, some of us have part time jobs that we support it with. Your and from the from the sales of the paper Where, where's your masthead? Pardon me? Where's your masthead which says who's behind it? Who's behind us? We're independent. There is no one behind uh, us. No, nobody's independent. Pardon me? Say so nobody is independent. Oh, certainly there are some people. No, we're all independent. We're we all make a valiant attempt. Cartoons, everything you need. Stash it in the bathroom. Okay, thank you very much. Pass it on to somebody else. Newspaper? Rap cord, 25 cents. All good news. No, you're not allowed to sell that here. Oh, I'm not? No, sir. Why is it? It's not public no, property here? Would you like to buy one, man? Yeah. Try it out. It's only 25 cents. You might find something in there you'd enjoy. Yes, sir. Who gets it 25 cents? We try to print some more newspapers. That's the truth. I'm, I'm making money. I'm not making. I'm not getting rich on for this. Pardon me. Maybe something shocking in it. Might be, but that's all right. You'll be all alone. You can read it. One thing. Is it red? 
red. You yeah. mean by communist? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. It's printed here. I never saw it before, but I'll buy it. OK, try it out. What happens if I don't like it? I'll bring it back? Sure. I'm not pushing Russia or China. What do you mean? This is communist. Do you expect us to pay for this crap? Your friend seems to be enjoying that page. Oh, we're like you know about women anyway. Well, do you want a paper or not? guys while I was selling. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Cops took me to the hospital. Hospital? Yeah, but I had some broken ribs. It was just bruises. How did it all start? Uh, three guys came up and started fighting. Why didn't you just ignore them? Well, they took my papers. I tried to get them back. They piled on. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah, yeah I'm okay. Cops took them in. They'll probably charge them with assault. I phoned Alan, he said we should press charges. Why bother? Use the courts to state her. The straight press will have to cover it. But you know what they'll say. I think you're making a mistake, you know? Anyways, I gotta go my boss. Job. We'll get by. We've done it before. No, man. Quit. Quit. I quit. Okay. I quit. <laughs> <laughs>
could have brought you to some sign that the struggle that you're in will soon be over. Some indication from the other side that he might be willing to let this suffering land finally heal its wounds. Okay, you people. A lot of those bombs and barrages you saw in our film are made right here. Right here in good old safety-ridden Canada. So how about uh, throwing off your traditional Canadian apathy for once and doing something about it? More than just we'll criticizing the war. We'll probably get some right-wing cat who decides Leave to your name and address here. You'll have your very own draft resistor in your home. No installation okay. charge. Easiest cherry pie. You get rid of that guilt feeling. I can give you an idea of what I mean. It's like... I was living down in New York, and this girl I was living with and I, we decided we didn't want any more property hassles in our life. So the first thing we did was we took the lock off the door of our apartment. You know, those, um, those big police locks that everyone has in the East Village? Yeah. Right after that, we invited people that we met who didn't have a place to stay to move in with us. And after a while, Oh, it was really nice. It was like we were living with a whole group of people, all of whom cared for one another and looked after each other. The city's generally a, a negative zone for me, but taking the lock off that door started a whole chain of good connections, except for the one that came from the U.S. Army. <laughs> Is that girl still back in New York? No, she, she went out west a few months ago. After a while, our heads were in different places. Not in any negative way, just very different. She's living on a commune now in Oregon. Are there any communes around here? No, oh, not too many. It's hard to make it work because of the long winter. Um, we know some people have one up near Mass Whippy. Come in. Uh-oh. Get us again. You're five days late now. Yeah, I know. Um, can you tell him we have it in a few days? He told me get it today for sure. Tell him we got uh, Pellegra. It cost us a lot to import it. How much is it? Fifty. Fifty? Fifty. Oh, I think I've got that much. Oh, no, man. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want you paying our rent. Forty-five of that American's enough, son. Okay, we'll see you later. We're supposed to be lodging you, man. He's he's starting on music now. what we're going to do is throw a lot of banana peels around Chicago and have the machine stumble. And when it stumbles, it gets into a policy of overkill and it starts to devour itself. So the cops are going to turn on themselves? Or they'll at least, how do you, you, how know, you they'll, they'll be time. fighting, they'll be fighting other people in power. See, in Grand Central Station, they weren't just clubbing us long hairs, you see. They start to take on commuters, you know, and people coming home from the opera and mayor's officials who are wandering around, and FBI agents who are there in secret, disguised as hippies. They're all getting clubbed just like us. I've owned a gun, yeah. but uh, it's just another theater prop. I can't shoot it for shit. See, I can I could hold you off forever just by using uh, uh, theatrical techniques. I'll show you, see, oh, you be straight. Okay. You be straight, guy. And you push me. Give me the cop. Come on, man, you fucker! Come on, come on, take me! See? Yeah. You ain't gonna touch me. 
You convince them that you're crazy enough to do anything, and then they won't touch you. For example, before we went to the Pentagon, uh, we start hearing all these spook stories about Mace, you know? So a couple of us sitting around, you know, getting pretty stoned. We say, Mace, huh? That's pretty dangerous. We need a drug of our own. How about lace? <laughs> and we start playing with lace, you know, lysergic acid, cryptoethylene, LSD, and DMSO, and, you know, invented by Osley. And, <laughs> well, let's go out and get some. So we go out and get some plastic water guns and some Schwartz Disappearo purple fluid and you squirt it on the wall and it vanishes. See, high penetration quality, right? So we call a little press conference, bring over the press, and we uh, squirt it at the wall. And they say, well, it's pretty good. Maybe it's true, maybe it isn't. We say, okay, come back in four hours. We come back, we have two couples, see? We squirt them. They take off their clothes, they fuck. The reporter says, holy shit, you know? Then go to take it and we say, you want to try it, you can get brain damage. You know, you run that risk, and they put it back, because they, they, you know, they're afraid to die. And the press is wireistic, and they're going to eat that goddamn thing up. And you look in Time Magazine, man, and there it is, a fact. No quotes, no hoax, no nothing. Lace, the new wonder drug, makes you fuck. Going to the <laughs> Pentagon. <laughs> but can that kind of thing protect people in Chicago? Or are you worried sure about that? Sure it can. I'm not worried about Chicago at all, of course not. Never worry, only mothers worry. <laughs> Duty Chicago seems hungry. like we are hurting ourselves into a stockade, you know? I mean, we're getting ourselves all together. Well, they can surround us. It, see, what the Democratic Party, look at their theater, right? International Amphitheater. Have you ever been down there? Uh, Have you yeah, been to Chicago? Uh, uh, What's well, out of sight? It's right in the stockyard, see? Yeah. It smells like yeah. shit and yeah. death and piss. And it's boring. You know, they'll have, like, Kate Smith singing the national <laughs> anthem, right? Okay. They'll have all these boring pigs, you know, fat businessmen, serious, very serious things, see? And they'll be showing this, see? And meanwhile, you know, like, every two minutes out of every hour, there'll be us out in the streets or up in the park doing all this thing. Wow, 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 the new America, exciting. And it'll be like a football game, yeah. see? Football game's a good model. Right. Cops versus the yippies or the National Guard or whoever, the paratroopers from Vietnam. I don't know who they're going to bring back to contain us. They're going to bring a lot of heavy equipment, see? And people will be watching that on TV and they'll say, we don't want to watch that boring speech stuff. We want to watch the Rose Bowl out there, you know? And they'll right. get mad. They'll say, why aren't they showing us that Rose Bowl? What are they showing us that boring stuff for? You know, a lot of people got to kick in their television sets that, that way. I was a girl, guy. Oh, oh, I got Troy. I never believed in that establishment kind of thing. <laughs> you get your milk from goats? Yes, yes. We make cheese from the goats, too. And how about in the winter? How do you feed them? We give them the cheese back again. <laughs> <laughs> do you have many long hairs out there? They seem to be by some coincidence. <laughs> And you get into trouble from uh, the, your neighbors? Well, no, we haven't made an establishment commune out of it. It's a commune, but, you know, we haven't made an issue out of it. You so, kind of haven't made an issue out of your purpose. No. Well, I, I was on a commune in uh, Connecticut. It did somewhat alienate the neighbors. Well, it's a threat. It becomes a threat. It's like an army building up around the corner. Are these mostly friends of yours? Yes, they're friends, friends of ours and friends of friends. And, you know, sort of anyone who's, you know, amiable to the place is, is welcome there. This way you got America. They're all into Freud. Say to them, hey, man, we're all getting laid, man. We're listening to music. We're having a groovy time. What do you want to work for? Talk to them about full unemployment. They know you don't work, and they're very intrigued by that. We don't work. No, I don't work, man. I just fucking around having a good time. That's disgraceful. They hate that in America. Right. Don't work. Of course we don't work. We're never gonna work. What do you guys want to work for? For some haggy old wife and some kids that don't respect you? I want to go to the commune tomorrow. Do you want to come? Tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. There's Abby. Huh? Yeah, I want to go tomorrow. After Chicago, we can go. After Chicago, but I want to go. You want to go now? Well, now uh, or tomorrow or soon. Well, I guess you should go, then. This is a fascist. No. I'd like to go after after Please we get check. back. What, what does he have to say this you're class? You're a fascist. You're a fascist. Says you're trying to drag me off to the... <laughs>
I'm doing you the service of refusing to allow you to pursue useless litigation. That's why I'm refusing to receive your information. The fact that they took my papers and beat me up when I tried to retrieve them. I've listened to your statement, Mr. Lucas, but I've also read the police report. And that seems to suggest that you brought this on yourself. My lord, the police arrived only after the provocation occurred. And they took statements from bystanders, from the alleged assaultees, and from your client. And the information they received does not corroborate your client's statement. I really see no point in pursuing this. I challenge there is a prejudice at work against my client. I suggest the police consider his appearance to be a provocation in itself. Mr. Dominic. I'm dealing with the factual evidence, and the information I've received adds up to no case at all, either for the Crown or privately. Thank you, my lord. Thank you very much, your lordship. Mr. Lucas, I really do believe that you would be best advised not to pursue this matter any further at all. You mean to say you're trying to help me? Yes, in a way, I am. You see, if you consider uh, were I to allow you to pursue this matter any further, you'd get yourself into an enormous amount of expense and very possibly involve yourself in criminal charges. But you've had access to the courts. I've had access me. to you, yes, one man. And I am the courts in this respect. I've examined all of the available but evidence. But your lordship, you've disbelieved every word I've said. You've believed two policemen whom you've never met. And as far as the bystanders go, how can you be sure about bias? Why should they be otherwise? Now, really, you For the same reason the you're biased, Your Lordship. Your clothes, your manners, your customs, your place of business, oh. your daily habits. Oh, I see. I see. Well, now, really, it's probably true that I'm, un uh, I'm not unbiased as, a, as an individual, as a man. But as a judge, I must shed my bias, and I must look only at the evidence that is before me and form my judgment uh, on that basis only. And you and feel I'm, as a judge, as one man, you can be right? I once had what you could call a political vision. It was on hash. I was sitting in a big amphitheater full of thousands of people, like the kind of crowds you see the Chinese leaders addressing. Only, instead of speeches or some kind of military parade, there was a big festival of paper dragons going on. Giant dragons floating overhead with, um, Big smiles on their faces. Be cool if we could reach a point where that's where politics was. You know? Go ahead, play something. I feel too ashamed to play anything. Can you play? A bit. Go ahead. This is a song about a girl I knew in California. <clears throat> Walking alone on an Empty highway, darkness all around. Girl rides up on a silver bike with dual exhaust and flashing lights, and she laughs so nice, taking off down the road. Her hair blows wild and her feet are bare, and she hums to the motor's roar. On every finger she wears a ring and drapes her bike with bells that sing a wailing chant of wind on a mountain road. Sun rising as we reach the sea, waves spraying at the rocks. We lie among the wet red flowers, every second becoming ours. 
Her body's touch new as a world being born She cries when I see the needle mark She has on many veins I show her scars inside my brain That come from shooting other pain We smile and throw words into the phone She knows someday she'll die on the road in a pile of chrome and steel. But she's seen the mountains and she's seen the sea. There's nothing she would rather be than a girl soaring through the night. She was very gentle and she had a dog called Friend. Because sometimes she thought that He was the only friend she had. She used to write down all the things that happened to them in a book. It was a lonely book, but very beautiful, too. Have you written many songs? Quite a few. I have a friend that owns a coffee house. He hires singers. No, I... I only play when I feel like it. Christ, Jesse, a guy plays this song, and right away you think of some practical way to use it. Well, I just thought he might like playing in a club, that's all. And I appreciate that. Me too. Hey, baby! Yeah, come on up. What's the word, man? <laughs> well, nothing good. <laughs> It seems any judge would have done the same thing. It's the old story. If you were important or you had somebody that could help you, you might get more action. Well, Karen's old man is a city councilor. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. You think if he, uh, he explained something yeah. to the judge, you know? Sure, that, that, that probably could do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, come on over. Yeah, sit down, man. Look, uh, how would you feel about asking your father to explain my case to a judge? I will if you want me to. Yeah, I know, I know. You don't like to ask him for anything. I don't like it either. I said I'd do it. Already. It's okay. You don't need to be sorry. Get out, but if you're tired. No, but wish I weren't. Good night, lover. Good night, babe. That's a column from the paper. Karen showed me some. I really like them. They, um, they get right into your head. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have to make that call. I'll just be a minute. Sure. so uptight they're occupying Chicago with troops more than when they invaded the Dominican Republic. Hmm. You'll be coming with us, I suppose? No. No? No, that's, that's not my scene. 
being against the war isn't your scene? I am against the war, Jesse. Well, what do you do about it? Try to be peaceful. Well, your being peaceful isn't going to stop the war. Is that? It's a start. What do you think you can do there? Try to get people to see the madness they're into. Try to save lives. It's only flesh you're trying to save, not lives. The flesh dies, but lives go on. Karma goes on until you get hip enough, and then you stay unmanifest in bliss. You're not afraid of death? No. You can call death a a liberation that comes about when your present karma is fulfilled. And if you can get any sense of who you were before. Before? Yeah, I know two of my past lives now. I was a Swiss guard at the Vatican in 1637 and a Sioux Indian in the 19th century. Then I kicked again, returned to darkness, and became manifest again in 44. So here I am, back on the wheel. I thought you weren't gonna try and tell me what to do with my life. But I am your father. And I just want to know one thing. That boy you're living with, the one who used to be in law. I'm... I know you're living with him. I know someone who, whose son knows his brother and... I wasn't going to deny it. Well, never mind that. But your mother thinks that he's keeping you in drugs so that you'll go out and support him while he... It's incredible. Do you really why? I wonder why I haven't called you in six months. So it's not true. But you should call your mother more often. Karen, she worries herself sick about you. People call and ask how you are and she has to make up lies. Why? Why? Well, what is she going to say? My daughter is fine. She, she's living with a man who's, who's not even Jewish. She dances in the nightclub. She, she wears clothes. Oh, listen, goodbye. Don't oh, care. Wait, wait. Let's start all over again. Give me another chance, all right? Okay. Sit down. Miss Keel, I don't want to be disturbed while my daughter's here with me. Uh, do you drink? No, not really. Take a Coke, then? OK. Would you like a cherry in it? Thanks. Thanks. I'm not working in clubs anymore. Oh? What are you doing? Oh, no. Not much. Oh, then, then you no, must no. need some. But you said you're not working. I also said I don't need any money. It's your life, but if you ever need any. I know. But you never ask. I don't need any money. All right. <laughs> I don't want to argue. Can't say there isn't opportunity here. We came here in the winter. We thought we'd starve. 
But the first day he came here, your grandfather got a job as a presser. On the very first day. Oh, well, for two years, everything was fine. Then what did the old fool do? Well, he became a union organizer, and got fired from his jobs. That's right. And I had to quit school at 13 to support the family. You've told that story many times. Just want you to see the advantages you've had. Because you see them as advantages. You're bitter. I can't blame you, though. But I just want you to realize that I, I also understand that old man. What's to understand? That he was a stubborn old... If that old man were alive today, he'd really understand Jesse and I in a way that you don't. Listen, I love you all in my own way. But it's so strange that I've never heard any of you laugh like that old man. Well, he could laugh, but protect himself in the world, he couldn't. Protect? You can get so caught up with protecting yourself that you end up destroying everything you're trying to preserve. Do you understand what I mean? You and my father and that Jesse of yours would have got along just fine. We're sure gonna, all of you. <laughs> I'm gonna go now. I'm glad you came to see me today, Karen. But you, ha you haven't done this in so long a time, I can't help thinking that something is wrong, that, that, that you're in trouble, that you need no, something. No. I just came because I wanted to see you, so. Good paper this week. I saw my father today. Is he willing to do it? Sorry, I just couldn't ask. Sorry. No, it's okay. I was beginning to feel funny about it myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Alan and I will just have to keep hounding the judges. Bad seeing him? At first, you know, he gave me that same old jazz, eh? Sent you to college, gave you everything a girl could want, and now look at you. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, you know, things start to go better. We actually talked for the first time in years. Anyways, I ended up glad I went to see him. Good. Good. I'd have felt bad if you'd have come home wiped out. Should go see my family one of these days. David left for Massawippi this morning. Good. Good. I mean good because I, I think you'll like it up there. Jesse? Mm-hmm. I'm going away for a while. To Massawippi? Yes.
then you won't be coming to Chicago. No, no. I just don't feel the same way about demonstrations anymore. No. I just think the world's gone too far for that. Maybe it is. You can only hope it isn't. I know. But right now, that hope, it just isn't strong enough in me to go there. I guess you need some money. No, it's okay. Uh, I have money. I pawned the guitar. Uh, why did you do that? You've been using it a lot lately. Listen, you're working and I'm not. Oh, what difference does that make? Anyways, it's done now. It, it, it's silly, really, to talk about it. And I meant to tell you, mm -hmm. the other afternoon when you were playing the guitar, mm -hmm. I thought it was David. <laughs> it really sounded good. I really thought it was him. <laughs> yeah. I'm used to you playing those songs from the instruction book. I know. Poor you. No. No, they were OK. You know, I, I really do want to see the paper. So before I go, I'll, I'll come by and get a copy. Jesse. Funny thing, love, whatever it is. Notes from the heart of the Empire. All roads lead to Chicago. Not too many people on those roads right now, except men in uniform. The New World. Cops, you call them? Yeah, OK, those are cops. This is a new world, colony the old, founded upon the massacre of Indians and the enslavement of Africans. America, a former colony, reaching out to defend its own empire. <laughs> what do you have to say? I don't like long hair. You would never grow your hair long? No. What if there were no more scissors? What would happen then? A knife. Yeah, that's right. Well, maybe knife ain't sharp enough. If you're sharpening it, is. <laughs> Karen's saying she's not so sure about demonstrations anymore. We want Humphrey every day. All the way. All the way. We want Humphrey every day. All the way. All the way. We want Humphrey every day. All the way. Many different kinds of people in this city. But Karen could say there were many different kinds of people at the Civil Rights March in 63 and at the Pentagon in 67, and what did that accomplish? Four years and many burning cities later, Congress won't even put through money for rat exterminations in the ghetto. And the tribunes of the people always being assassinated. Would you like to shoot somebody with a gun? No, I would like to shoot someone with a gun. You would? No, you wouldn't. Would you? I would. You would? Yeah. How about that? You wouldn't? Uh -huh. I wouldn't. You wouldn't. One soldier, one potential soldier in the crowd. You would too, two potential soldiers. I would. You would, three.
Every sign held high and a standing ovation for Phil Oaks. Je parais un peu fatigué parce que tout à l'heure, je dois aller surveiller les vieux du côté des abattoirs. Mr. Genet says that if he seems tired, it is at the thought of having to go from here out to the amphitheater of the old near the stockyards. Les chiens, dont parle Bureau, ils étaient dans leur fonction d'obéir, non pas à l'intelligence, mais à l'instinct de chien policier. Et je suis assez content que des blancs américains soient menacés par ces chiens qui ont fait la même chose avec plus de brutalité contre les noirs en général. C'est donc. C'est donc bien que les chiens américains, il est donc bien que les chiens américains essayent de dévorer des Américains blancs. But people should realize that the dogs have finally reached the point where they are also capable of attacking the president of General Motors, who is vulnerable at last. Hippies, you have responded to the clownish convention, the democratic convention, by your demonstrations in the park, which are filled with poetry. Incredible ovation for Alan Ginsberg. Thank you. 
tired historical phantoms acting indefinite roles written for them by egotistical poets in the city hall. Draft cards being burnt. that this is the same festive aura that was evident in Berlin and Munich in 1932? Or is this a thing unique to its times, an answer to the crisis of the world? And it does indeed sound like the war is over.
you know, if, if machines are models of people, they'll surely inherit bad qualities, the same as the people have. But one person with his bad qualities isn't in a position to wipe out all the other people that are around. But one person with a machine which embodies those bad qualities can. It can ruin the planet. See, I, I yeah, think, I think the and it's a shame. It's a dangerous shame. About this technology is, um, you're talking about harmony and ecology. And we're all very aware of the difficulty of attaining a state of inner harmony. Now, one of the things that seems to me why that's difficult is um, the technology, like these lights and like plumbing fixtures and that kind of thing, remove us from the basic harmonic rhythms of nature. The sun rising every morning, the moon coming up at a certain time. And it seems to me that, that almost all the conveniences of modern civilization sets you apart from those basic rhythms that everyone can relate to. And this is one of the reasons we have so much trouble finding our own internal rhythm, because we're so cut off from the real rhythms, the real natural rhythms, by these artificial things Maybe that we one create. doesn't exclude the other necessarily, though. Maybe we can have some, you know, like, uh, be at one with nature, as they say, and also have things yeah. that make us comfortable. I, I, think no, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know that one necessarily excludes the other. If you talk only in terms of totals, then they do, maybe. <laughs> in terms of... Uh... There's something very close to me with living in nature. Why are you making it a judgment? You know, let the people who want to live in the city live in the city. You're saying you're putting the people who live in the city down, and I don't think that's Not, fair. I'm trying. You're saying well, to you're isolating Analyze them. the good and bad points. But why are you polarizing it though, as good and bad? To, Leave it. To clarify the conversation. I, well, I don't think I don't think uh, I think you're only distorting it if it's making it good and bad. Wow. I think I think to, to talk in such simple things is good and bad. It's a trap. Yeah, I mean, you're doing exactly the same. Every thing. everybody. <laughs> Everybody's making a choice between living in the country and the city. I, I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying what he was away. saying, like, come to so the like country, you know, it's like, come to the country yeah, and yeah, get yeah. in tune with your well, psyche. I don't sure, think that's necessarily sure. true, right, because your streets, psyche is here, yeah. man. You know, whether it's in right, the street in or in your mm -hmm. garbage pail or in the, in the haystack, you know your psyche's in so here. it doesn't matter whether you're in Montreal or in the country. In your head, you know that they're right now in the world. You know, people are being killed, for example. And well, you even know yeah, uh, how many people are being killed every second. You don't know if you haven't seen anyone killed lately. But well. It doesn't matter. I know that there are. Oh, come on, you don't have to see it you know. to know it's no, happening. No, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I think that the Vietnam's the, there, you know? I think that the, we don't see it. Well, I wouldn't have known it if I hadn't read it. I don't believe I'd have I'd Yeah, but you haven't seen it. it. No, I've read about it. Yeah, I've seen it right. continually that's on That's what I'm saying, though. That's what she's saying. Though. That's what she's saying. It's, it mm -hmm. lives with you all the yeah. time. But I think you can do something else. You can say, OK, I know about this stack of things which are worrying and upsetting, and it's not going to do any good being involved. You can't stop it. You can't protest seems naive, to me, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, all you can do, conscientiously, is try to make the best out of your lifetime. And if, if these things are, are spoiling your lifetime, then going away and removing yourself from the source of the information, you know, will fix it. It makes you less... I think it does. You know about Vietnam, but you won't know about the next one. The demonstrations and that kind of thing is just, is just bitching, complaining, sure. saying change things, change things. But so are you saying change things by coming out here? No, he's, he's changing, changing things. things. So they, they feel they're changing things no, they're too not. by demonstrating. But they're not really. But, but they're you not say changing. they're not. They're not I mean, see, but, but they say they are. Things. They're not changing things. They're, they're asking, asking somebody else yes, to change right. it. Whereas we're just well, doing it. See, that's Well, they're doing their thing too, and we're doing ours. That's all. I know. Like they're saying is That's what you say. We're not down on them. We're just trying to figure out for our own minds, right, like, what's, what's, what, what's a decent way of operating? We all know. I think we all realize that setting up good vibrations and coming on with a good sound and love is the best way. So There's no doubt that. about that. But I'm saying that doesn't preclude also defending yourself. Active defense, to my mind, is the first step in aggression. And you know for a fact that they're going to come and wipe you out. I don't and think I'm you can know that for well, a fact. Okay, I'm Because often people come to kill Well, someone's end. coming right with a gun to your head. Is that a fact or not? Well, I, I think if it's a matter of either killing him and becoming a killer in order to save your own life, it's better to let him shoot your head off. Well, I, think, I think you can say this, that if you're really sure about something, then there's nothing to defend. If you're really sure about something, yes, you don't in have your to inner, defend it. Inner, innermost self, if you're sure about it, there's nothing to defend because no one can harm it. Are you the ultimate defense? Like, uh, well, if it is, it's mighty subtle then. But no, of course, I mean, there are many subtle things in this well, world. I don't know if I'd clearly I go and buy a gun, but if I was sure, absolutely 100% sure, if that such a thing is possible, that someone was coming for me with a gun, so I would defend myself. <laughs> Sure. 
gas bombs modeling the interiors of the cities. The air poisoned with tear gas. Everybody moving one by one. Nobody knowing if they may be the next or not. Nobody seeming to care. Feeling a lightness, the solidarity.
of them. Coming out here has made me feel really good and getting back to the simple things again, like this quietness and laughing with you a lot before we got into all these, all these words. Or missing Jesse. Thinking about him there.
I was never primarily interested in prosecution. We did want to bring this case to court, right? As useful farce. Does that mean that you can't use this case that way? Well, it'd be bringing the power of the system to bear on three people that are victims of it already. Why victims? They attacked you. They're victims of forces that they don't even know, they don't even understand. They're not even aware of them. It's true, but the fact still remains that these three guys can go out and beat up other people the way they did you. So in dropping the case, you were evading a public responsibility. That's what you said when I quit law school. All right, let's not get into that. We'll save it for coffee at the rap court. It's not a whole long line of clients waiting outside. Oh, <laughs> right, just uh, a bunch of advertisers waiting to see that paper they pay for. <laughs> hmm? hey, you haven't lost your old debating society form. <laughs> I lose that and I won't have enough money to oil this big, fat, luxurious <laughs> imitation leather chair. You won't be able to afford the guns for the revolution. All right. If you take Toronto next week, did you know? Toronto next week? Did I you receive the message from the fat man? That's right. Receiving a dozen million dollars tonight and get in there and uh, build up that 14 million rounds that I promised the revolution. <laughs> it's impossible. It must be done. It's ridiculous. I can't raise millions. Uh, well, then we fine. must seek other means, if you know what I mean. <laughs> what if it happened to the days when we round the corners on our CCM bicycles with the broken horns and fill up our footballs down at the gas station. Toss them around. Uh, redhead dyed her hair and, you know, for... Hey, right. went to pieces. <laughs> we forget the revolution for the time being. And we have a little lunch. Ah, uh, yes. I tell you what, you may do the honors. They make you commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very nice. How about turning up the air conditioner, yeah. uh, then shutting the door, and we shall communicate on the higher echelon a transcendental hallucination. Paper, you were here. How's the case going? It's not. I'm dropping it. Shivaya, Ayom Namo 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 Shivaya, Ay
Come on,